So this certainly comes as a surprise. Amazon just released the third Kindle Scribe feature update only a month after the last one. And you'd suspect that it doesn't add anything substantial with a time frame that short. But that's not the case. Same as with the last two updates, Amazon adds important new features with this new version 5.6.2 that Kindle Scribe users were waiting for. So let's check them out. Just a quick reminder, Amazon rolls out updates in batches, so not all devices receive the update at the same time. If you're patient enough to wait, you can just wait for the Kindle Scribe to update automatically. If you don't want to wait, you can download the update file on your computer and update the Kindle Scribe manually. I'll leave the link to the update and to the instructions in the comments below. The first edition of the new software is the Lasso tool. Its absence was painfully obvious for many people. With this new software, it's now available in the toolbar as an additional option to choose from. And it works exactly as you'd expect. Select the Lasso tool, circle the content you want to change, and it gets selected. And now you have a couple of options. You can resize the content by using the corner indicators, or you can also move the selection around on the page and just move it somewhere else. All of which works without any issues. And last but not least, you can also copy or cut the selection. By copying it, you copy it to the clipboard and can paste it anywhere you can take handwritten notes in. So you can paste it on the same page in the notebook, on another page, or even in other notebooks, PDF files or sticky notes in an ebook. That's super cool and useful to organize your notes, in my opinion. Cutting the selection works the same way, except by using this function, it will remove the selection from the page. Pasting a clipboard content somewhere works flawlessly as well. Just tap the clipboard icon in the toolbar and then tap where you want to paste it on the screen or inside the sticky note. To clear the clipboard, simply tap the clipboard icon a second time to bring up the option to do so. So that was a much needed addition. And same as with the last features of the last two updates, it works really well and enhances the user experience quite a bit. Just one thing missing that I'd like to see with future updates is the option to rotate the selection as well. The second edition are more PDF options. With the last update, Amazon improved the PDF navigation for zooming and moving the viewport around and also added contrast enhancements. That were seemingly minor changes, but actually proved to be very useful. Same as last time, all improvements are only applied to PDFs sent through the send to Kindle function. Those are the ones you can annotate directly on the page with the pen. This time around, Amazon added a couple of more functions. So now you can rotate the PDF into landscape, which was something you couldn't do with the note taking capable PDF files before. With the 10.2 inch screen, that's an incredibly useful feature because for large format files, it means text is almost the same size as it would be if you printed that page. You obviously have to scroll up and down a bit, but that works flawlessly as well. And if you like, you can also zoom in further in landscape by using the pinch to zoom function. You also have the option to crop the page margins now in three levels. So if you don't intend to annotate in the margins, you can just crop them and enhance readability of smaller text even more. Amazon also added the option to select text in those PDF files as well. So tapping and holding on the screen will now bring up the same context menu we know from other documents. You can highlight the selection, create a text note, or look up the word in the dictionary, Wikipedia, and use Bing's online translation service to translate the selection. Those PDF editions are great to have and work without any problems as far as I could tell. And the third new feature was the biggest surprise for me personally, handwriting conversion. So many people were asking for it because having the option to convert your handwritten notes to type text can be incredibly useful if you want to process those notes further. The handwriting conversion on the Kindle Scribe is not directly done on the notebook page like most other eNote devices are doing it. Instead, the conversion is part of the sharing process. You can send notes to your own email address or up to five others, 
And by doing so, you have the option to do handwriting conversion. The text file that is received won't be a PDF notebook, but a text file with the notes without any formatting. So any non-text annotations are missing in there as well. Now, you might wonder what happens if that handwriting conversion doesn't work properly. There are actually two different options here. The quicksend function simply converts the handwriting and sends it directly to your registered email address without any additional steps. So the whole conversion process is happening in the background and you directly get the text file download link sent to your email inbox. The second option allows you to review the conversion before sending it. So the conversion is done during this loading screen right here. And then you can review if that's what you actually have written and not some nonsense that you don't want to send to someone. As for the reliability of the function, it works okay. There were some misses with a couple of handwritten pages of mine, which to be honest, I myself sometimes have a hard time to decipher, but most of the time the Kindle scribe did an okay job with it. But especially when some strokes are bleeding into the next line, or when I used brand names or other words that aren't native to English, it tends to get it wrong more often than not. There's an option, however, to change the handwriting conversion language in the device's settings. So for example, if you're using the scribe with the user interface set to English, but take notes in another language, you can adapt the setting in the options menu and change the handwriting conversion language. As of yet, there are 20 different options available. I'll leave the whole list in the description below. I personally like the addition of text conversion a lot and think it improves usability of the Kindle Scribe tremendously for professional use. I can live with the fact that the conversion doesn't happen directly on the notebook page, as my experience with this sort of conversion on other devices has been mixed. My only wish would be to being able to save the converted text files locally as well, to have them all directly on the device. Reliability could be a bit better, to be honest, but same as with other devices, your mileage will definitely vary depending on your personal handwriting style. And the fourth and last new feature is called Write-On Content. This one I haven't had the chance to test yet. But what it means is that you can write directly on an ebook page without the need to create a sticky note. The reason why I couldn't test it yet is because it's not available for all titles. So there's a special compatibility option for it to work. From my understanding, this isn't meant to replace sticky notes in regular text ebooks, but instead is an additional option for special format books like guided journals, crosswords, and sudokus. Okay, so those are the four latest editions of this update. I've been in touch with Amazon and asked about future updates as well, which unsurprisingly, they wouldn't answer at this point. But I had to try, right? What they told me, however, is that there would be additional updates throughout this year. So let's see what comes next. But from my point of view, the new features Amazon added to the Kindle Scribe with this last three updates look very much like how the Kindle Scribe was intended to be released. There's obviously always room to add new features, <laughs> layers, and refine existing ones, but it now feels much more complete in terms of user experience than when I first reviewed it when it was released. What do you think about the Kindle Scribe with those additional updates? Are you happy with the additions? And what do you think is still missing? Let us know in the comments below. If you're interested in the Scribe and haven't bought it yet, I'll do a follow-up review in the next couple of weeks where I take another look with all the new features in place and also share my experience of using it over the past six months. To not miss that and to not miss any other future reviews and updates I'll be covering, please like and subscribe to also help me out a bit with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for your time watching and see you on the next one.